the graves. So there's 65,000 that we know of. And there's one place in El Paso that has its own account of our storied past. A ranch turned cemetery called Concordia. It's as grand as it is gothic. We're here in the Concordia Cemetery, which is in the heart of El Paso. Here in Concordia, we have regularly over the years discovered evidence of black magic, brujaria. We have found severed heads of livestock, body parts, packages containing underwear, blood-soaked items. A lot of infants are buried here. The lady in black has been seen in the daytime and at night. They chased him in here and they ran him over. And later on, they weren't sure if he was dead, so they came back and ran him over a few more times. This part of Concordia is Hell's Gate or Devil's Gate. I've had guests of the cemetery come up to me and ask, what happened over here? This is one of the areas where we've had shadow people near the wall. You name it, it almost happens at any random time, uh, day or night, uh, in this location. Uh, a lot of people claim also that when you walk in to the grove here, everything kind of changes a little bit. It was a shot go. glass full of something we don't know. Anything that will light up, usually you'll get a response here. SLS screen yes. froze again. Oh, another one. No, a different one. <laughs> Completely we different. On screen. This is a very eerie cemetery. Oh, uh, what? We had to hire private security to patrol the grounds while we're in here investigating because of the people that break in. Look at this dark spot. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Look at that right there. All of them, dude. All of them. Oh, this is James. This is the hard. That this is hard. Arms thing. Oh, look at look at look at look at it. There's over 60,000 people buried here. We've got a lot of ice up in the tree. Up in the look tree. At, there's three figures at one time in front of this oh, tree. Up in the Cynthia, are you here with us? Break, break, oh. break! Look, film it. Ask it, boy. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Martin. I'm with the Concordia Heritage Association. Uh, we're here in the Concordia Cemetery, which is in the heart of El Paso. Uh, we're one of the oldest cemeteries here in El Paso that is currently still standing. Uh, there were a number of other cemeteries here in El Paso, um, but those have been relocated. Uh, ours is the oldest currently. Uh, it was originally part of Rancho Concordia, which was started by Hugh and Juana Stevenson when they married in, I want to say around 1824. Shortly after they were married, they formed Rancho Concordia here as part of her, essentially her land dowry. Uh, Juana Escarte was part of a local, uh, rather wealthy family. Uh, Hugh Stevenson came from Missouri. Uh, he himself was an orphan and was raised in a little town called Concordia, Missouri, which is where Concordia gets its name. Uh, today, the cemetery as it stands now is a little bit over 52 acres, and we have well over 65,000 buried within our precincts that we know of. Concordia is still an active cemetery. In fact, when um, my partner Colette Mays and I were out uh, walking around the cemetery, we found a new headstone, which was dated just a couple months ago. So with us still being a, an active cemetery, we do have burials about one a month. Though now, unless your family has a plot here, that's the only way you can get buried. So let's uh, talk about where we are right now. So where we're at right now is what's known as Selman's Grove. It's named primarily, or got its name primarily from uh, John Selman, who is the slayer of the infamous John Wesley Harden. Uh, John Selman was an El Paso City Constable, and he's buried a little bit right over there. We'll probably see his headstone. But this place is also known as the Vortex, um, or the Three Trees, depending on 
who's referencing it. Uh, the trees that are standing behind us are salt cedars. They're very common to this part of the desert. They love to suck up water. They're also kind of nature's air conditioners. Uh, they suck up thousands of gallons of water in a, as a mature tree and they evaporate it. Um, out in the wilderness, you'll often find everything from birds to uh, animals and they kind of cool down the area. Uh, this is one of the areas that is said to be where uh, the now late Richard Ramirez, when he was growing up here in El Paso, uh, was said to come and hang out when he was uh, not at home uh, and hanging out here in, in Concordia Cemetery. Now, we are not sure if this is exactly the location that he supposedly practiced the alleged black magic and everything else like that, but here in Concordia, we have regularly over the years discovered uh, evidence of people leaving everything from uh, black magic, brujaria, uh, which is a Hispanic for form of witchcraft, and various other ceremonial items. We have found uh, severed heads of livestock, body parts, packages containing underwear, blood-soaked items. Uh, one year we had report of uh, from our security company of uh, several decapitated birds in a particular pattern here on the grounds, not here, uh, but elsewhere in the cemetery. And so to highlight the Richard thing too, can you talk about him possibly sleeping? Again, El Paso gets pretty hot. In fact, as we learned uh, already, this area will get randomly hot and we're in the early part of January and already it's almost 70. It's one reason why I got the hat on. Uh, <laughs> I burn rather easily those those Irish jeans, uh, you know, fireworks displays, I get a sunburn. <laughs> but as you can kind of see these trees, they're kind of dead up here because we had a frost last winter that really knocked these trees down, so they're regrowing again. But as I mentioned earlier, these are essentially nature's air conditioners. So they're naturally really cool. So if you're gonna kind of hang out on a hot summer night and want a place to kind of hang out or even spend the night tucked up under one of these trees. In fact, I'm going to walk over a grave. Um, it's really easy to kind of get in here, uh, live, like wildlife and everything else like that. Often will bed down like deer and everything. Uh, these, they're a cedar type plant or a cedar plant, cedar tree. Um, the leaves on them are very soft. So they make a very naturally soft bedding material. Um, the reason why they're salt cedars is the leaves are salty, so they will uh, poison the, the ground from a lot of other species from growing, which is one reason why they're considered an invasive species for a lot of agriculture districts and even water conservation districts will normally cut these down and ex uh, exterminate them because of how much water they take out of the water system. But it does make a very nice, comfortable place to kind of hang out on a hot summer area. So this would be actually a logical location. If you're a kid running away from whatever problems at home to kind of hang out at. Look comfy. I've camped out under these uh, before, not these particular ones, but I've camped out under a couple salt cedars uh, in my day and they really are really nice and comfy. Don't do it if you're next to a river because you'll get mosquitoes and you'll probably be itching for days, but they are actually a lot more comfortable than pine trees, let me tell you. Hmm. So activity here, what do people, what's like the main report? We get everything reported and I've, I've even witnessed everything from battery draining, your cell phones might not work. I have seen irregular magnetic compasses not be able to point to north or get any actual bearing. Cat balls, which are actually very popular uh, now uh, as, a, as an indicator um, or a trigger device, regularly will go off uh, with nobody touching them anywhere around. Uh, we have gotten some great EVPs reported. I've recorded some great EVPs out in this area. Uh, you name it, it almost happens at any random time, uh, day or night, uh, in this location. Uh, there have been a couple of incidents where it's been reported, and I've even seen um, mysterious figures. Uh, I saw, saw a man in black a couple of years ago uh, actually walking in this area. So more over that direction, not here, but this 
end of, of this block of the cemetery, lots and lots of activity. Um, almost any time we come out here, there's always something a little bit off. Uh, a lot of people claim also that when you walk in to the grove here, everything kind of changes a little bit. You feel a different energy. Uh, whether that's because it's naturally cooler, where everywhere else is warmer, or if it's that magnetic change in field. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how sensitive humans really are to change in magnetic field, or maybe it's something else. But uh, those are, it's across the board with what happens out here. Hi, my name's Colette Mays. I'm with the Concordia Heritage Association. We're here at Cynthia Jimenez's grave. She actually died in uh, 1972. She lived for one day. She was so loved that her father built this cradle grave. It's the most unique grave that we have here in Concordia. She is so well loved that every holiday to this day, her parents still come and visit her. And after a Halloween or Christmas or her birthday in August, will come and there'll be flowers like you see here, toys. Uh, sometimes we find little pumpkins with candy in it. So you'll always, there's always something here, balloons, cards. I've met her parents and they're just lovely people. And they're, they're so grateful that people still visit her because she was so loved in life. Paranormal activity wise. Okay, paranormal here. As this is, this is a lot of infants are buried here. If you notice, you'll see little toys all over the graves, which I think Cynthia's father puts on there and you'll see little graves. However, in these trees, we've seen a little girl and a little boy. Um, also, the lady in black has been seen with a child sitting on the benches on the other side. Now, the lady in black has been seen in the daytime and at night. She will acknowledge you and you will turn around and she'll be gone. She's like dressed in Victorian morning garb. We don't know who she is, um, but she's been seen here. Um, also, uh, pregnant women will get strange feelings in this area or if you've had a miscarriage, you kind of feel some heaviness in here. But yeah, there's a lot of activity. We think the little boy is named Daniel. Over the years, that's the name we've been getting on our equipment. Uh, we also think he's the one that follows us around. We always leave, left him candy on this grave. Cause you know, he always would, you know, if we ask him, you know, if you want candy, we'll bring you some. He always would respond with any trigger objects or K2, he'll always answer you. So we get a lot of that over here. And then of course, if you're here, you look over at the vortex, you'll see shadows. <laughs> so, yeah, it's you know, right it's there. like right here. So yeah, so that's what goes on over here. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is the site of a time capsule. And as far as we know, we're the only cemetery in Texas that has one. Um, it was buried in the year 2021, I believe. Chris, I'm pretty sure. But it's, it's scheduled to be open January 1st, 2025. Did you mean 1921? No. No, 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 that's when he died. No. Oh, this is. No, okay, it was yeah. It buried in 2000. 2000, <laughs> sorry, I was off a year. So it was buried by the CHA. Now, Chris and I are both members of the CHA, and we don't even know what's in it. It's scheduled to be open in 2025. This site is actually the Azar family's plot. The Azar family are nuts. I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're the pecan farmers here. They're, they have a store um, on the west side. Uh, they actually donated this to the CHA for this time capsule. We don't know what's in it. We're hoping to be here when it is. My standing joke is, is that Chris and I are the youngest members of the CHA. Actually, Chris is now the youngest. I was until he joined. Um, <laughs> so it, all the members are 20 years older than me. So my joke is, is they wanted to be around when it was opened, but that's just my little joke. <laughs> so, sorry. No, they're great people. But anyway, but that's what we, as far as we know, this is the only one in, in Texas. We passed by it on tours for years, didn't know, did a little bit of research, found out it was a time capsule. Wow. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. I hope everybody is enjoying tonight's video. I know that I enjoyed my time in the Concordia Cemetery. Very, very scary place. I mean, obviously you can see from the footage, but tonight's video is actually sponsored by a game called Switchcraft. 
Switchcraft is a game that revolves around witchcraft, which is why I chose to promote it on the channel. I actually love the game. It's a beautifully designed game. So download the game today and enter the spellbinding world of Switchcraft and experience a unique blend of TV worthy writing, choose your own adventure, and a thousand plus magical match three levels. This graphic novel style mobile game offers a satisfaction of an episode binge with the power to determine your own story. In the game you play as Bailey, a freshman at a top witchcraft academy. And at the start of the game, Bailey's best friend has disappeared and she needs your help to get to the bottom of the mystery. So the reasons why I loved playing Switchcraft is because it's a beautiful game. All the designs are actually hand painted, so it's a very immersive experience. It's fun to look at, fun to watch, fun to play. It's an absolutely gripping mystery story about modern day witches with a strong female witch as the protagonist. And I love the choose your own adventure style of the game. There's not one set ending. You can play the game any way that you like. It was honestly so much fun to test out the game and being a paranormal investigator and having these themes of the occult and witchcraft in the game it was really cool. I loved the game design. It is one of the most beautiful games that I've ever seen on a mobile phone. And I can't thank them enough for sponsoring this video. So download and play Switchcraft today and unlock the magical mystery. I'm going to leave the link to the game in the description box of the video below. So go download it and make sure to use my exclusive link. It helps me out. It helps the channel get more promotions and it helps us do bigger and better videos. So yeah, Switchcraft. Anyways, let's get back to today's video. I can't thank everybody enough for watching. Jeff and I are planning with Courtney our final videos in Texas before Courtney and I moved to Philadelphia at the end of April, not this month. So yeah, it's crazy. We're gonna revisit some huge locations and we're gonna explore some history in Texas that I've always been dying to explore, but I haven't gotten the chance to. But anyways, let's get back to the video and uh, stay spooky. So here we are at the John Wesley Hardin grave. Uh, this is honestly one of the most uh, visited graves in Concordia, if not one of the most visited sites here in El Paso. John Wesley Hardin was a son of a minister, uh, I believe it was Methodist minister. Uh, he was born in 1859. He was also a gunfighter. He made his uh, first killing, his first murder at the age of 15, went on the run. Uh, forget what his body count was. I want to say it was in the 20s. So, I'm sorry, Colette. 44. 44? Okay. okay, so pick it back up. So, uh, Hardin's ultimate body count was 44 men. Uh, he was uh, captured by uh, Texas Rangers and other law enforcement on a train. What honestly uh, got him captured was his pistol got hung up on his suspenders. Uh, he was uh, sentenced to serve in Huntsville, Texas. Uh, penitentiary it was not a execution offense he was actually given about 15 years he served a majority of that time and uh, during his time of incarceration he earned his law degree and upon his early release by the governor uh, he uh, became a lawyer and that's how he came out here to El Paso he met a lovely woman by the name of Beulah Morose who was kind of a questionable lady Hardin ended up getting killed in the Acme Saloon by John Selman, a city constable. You can definitely get his full story uh, online in a number of places. Every August 19th, which is the anniversary of Hardin's death, we have a reenactment of uh, the last moments of Hardin's life portrayed by Six Guns and Shady Ladies, an excellent reenactment group. Uh, right here at the grave site, uh, they do a reenactment shootout and we have a toast. This grave is opened uh, just a couple times a year, August 19th, obviously Dia de los Muertos here at the cemetery where we have an annual festival and a few other special occasions. Otherwise it remains secured. The reason why there is a cage around this uh, grave is not because he is a very dangerous man in life, was excuse me it is because of a uh, little bit of a scandal involving his heirs that were very much living they wanted to disinter his grave and relocate it to where he was originally from well they didn't have authority to do that eventually the el paso county courts and the el paso county sheriffs stepped in according to the story uh, even the headlines, a patrol car was parked over the grave in order to stop the grave from being robbed uh, in broad daylight. An injunction was filed. The family was not able to disinter 
the grave just because they wanted to relocate it for tourism purposes. And uh, Hardin stays where he's at today. And so the Concordia Heritage Association had this erected. Uh, it's kind of a monument. A little bit of an ironic uh, thing about Hardin, though he's now behind bars. He's currently also guarded by two very real life Texas Rangers. We have Diamond Dick St. Leon. I don't know, forget the name of the other Texas Ranger down there. We also have former El Paso County Sheriff Comstock at, uh, down the way who was president at all six of El Paso County's lawful executions after we became uh, got statehood. And that was before 1932 when the electric chair came into play as the primary means of execution. And there's even a former army chaplain and Baptist minister, uh, the Reverend Hiram Reed right over there. So it's kind of a little bit ironic that Hardin is behind bars. He's got three lawmen and a chaplain watching over him after death. Now, something that has been seen several times here at or around this grave, we're not sure if it's Diamond Dick or if it is possibly Hardin himself, but is often seen a cowboy man in black walking around um, in broad daylight everyone from our members of the CHA, regular citizen visitors, and even our security staff have seen them. We do have a photograph um, that someone had taken and, and has turned into us. I believe it may have even been a member of the board. Uh, it was taken some years ago. Uh, we can share that with you. But um, that's what we have here for Harden. And now I guess the murder. Okay, Colette's actually more versed on that one. So you guys know, Gertrude Beulah was married to Martin Morose, and he's buried two graves over. Yeah. And that's where she buried him, and then he he was killed by Hardin's group. Um, and then then when he died, she buried him right here. So, huh. so, so he's right there. Wow. Yeah. So there's a whole story with that. That's so interesting. What we find here inside Hardin's grave is we'll find everything from change, to shot glasses we have found women's underwear we have do we need do i need to change light and yeah, start again yeah. okay <laughs> inside the grave uh regularly we will find on the headstone and around it and also around the texas state marker uh, it is not uncommon for us to find everything from coins uh, and it's not just u.s coins like i said this is one of the most visited Uh, women's underwear. When Hardin died, he was one of the most desirable men um, in El Paso. Uh, in fact, it is said that uh, the ladies of the night who had not had their opportunity to enjoy the company of Mr. Hardin went to where he was on display uh, for the public to view uh, immediately after his death in the Atme Saloon, went and dipped the hems of their dresses and also their handkerchiefs in Hardin's blood so that they would finally have a bit of Hardin's essence. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, it got a little bit risque back in the day. <laughs> a little kind of a little gross, you know, getting somebody's blood, but you know, that was just kind of the, the stuff uh, that happened back then. So we, whenever those of us who are members of the board uh, or the CHA will come out here on, and check on the graves. We always stop by Hardin to see what we might have. Um, any of the change and the money that's found here, we collect and it goes into our donations for the Concordia Heritage Association. And all that money goes to some of the preservation. We occasionally have enough money to replace headstones. A lot of the families that are here, uh, as I said uh, before, this cemetery has been here as a functioning cemetery since uh, the 1880s. There are families who are no longer here alive um, or may no longer physically be here in residence in El Paso and we want to maintain the cemetery and so those funds that we do generate go into the preservation of that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if we uh, each throw a quarter in there? I got two quarters. Oh, go for okay. it. All right. Here you go, man. Sure. What would be uh, any kind of good luck or anything like if you put a quarter in any kind of thing? Any kind of good luck? Um, yeah. You know, you could try your luck. I don't know. He was a gambler, so I would say 50-50 if you're throwing a coin. I'm going to flip it then. 
50-50 if I'm good or bad luck, I guess. For John, uh, more for the preservation of the cemetery. Heads or tails? What do you say? Heads, I'm gonna say. Uh, it's heads. Oh, I'm, that's good luck. Or was it? Nope, that's tails. Oh, that's tails. Oh, that's right. tails. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. heads. Your turn. Okay, I'm gonna say, let's go tails. Oof. What is it? Well, it's hard to see, isn't it? Tails. Tails, tails. again. Okay. Well, two tails. We that might be good luck. Right. There you go. <laughs> What we're telling uh, yeah, tales. Colette has a picture of something we found. It was a shot ago. glass full of something we don't know. Probably tequila. I took this photo on a tour one night and we came in. There's the shot glass right there. Oh. And it was set on the Texas State Monument. I can't get that marker. Yeah. You can. Maybe you can email it for them. I could yeah, email it for you for sure. But if you try yeah, and reach you know, in there, there you had either a really slender person or someone with really long arms because it's right on the corner of where that aluminum plaque is at. It's it's kind of a little bit of a reach to where that 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 item was was uh, located. Wow. So so we are standing on the location of, of the only murder that happened in Concordia that we are aware of. This was in 1993. You can actually Google. Uh, episode of Cops because that's where it was filmed. It was filmed on an episode of Cops. So it was a young man. He belonged to a gang. This is before the walls and security were in place. This is before, shortly after the CHA was formed. So before all this uh, has taken place. So in you, at that time, you can drive in and out day or night. So he belonged to a game. They got into a fight. They uh, chased him. He got out of the truck. They chased him in here unfortunately, and they ran him over and they left him here. Then they took off and later on, they weren't sure if he was dead. So they came back and ran him over a few more times. Now, the only reason they were caught is because of course, what happened is they started bragging about it. So, yeah, so the next day, plus the next day it had rained. So a lot of the footprints and the tire tracks had washed away because it had rained, but the, he was found laying right here. Now, the paranormal that we have found in this spot, for some reason, if you come and, you know, put a trigger object or K2 or anything or a remrod, any, you know, anything that will light up, usually you'll get a response here. We're not sure if it's him, but it's usually right in this area. Um, it's a very active spot. So, wow. uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, here we are in the Chinese cemetery of Concordia, or at Concordia, shall I say. It was acquired by the Chinese Benevolent Association um, of El Paso, Texas, in November of 1886, specifically for the purpose of burying the Chinese railroad workers that came with the Southern Pacific Railway to build the railroad in the late 1800s. Um, the custom of a lot of the Chinese immigrants that came to build the railroads and also work in some of the mines, such as in California, uh, was to be ultimately buried and or cremated on your home soil. So this for a long time during those days was largely for a temporary burial. Uh, as seen often in Europe, where the body would be buried in a particular location for a short period of time so it can decompose, and then the bones would be exhumed, packed away, and then sent back to the country of origin to be, whether cremated or interred uh, with the family. Uh, a lot of the Chinese workers ultimately ended up settling down. This became their homeland. Uh, we have a lot of families uh, still to this day in El Paso and in our sister city, uh, Ciudad Juarez, across the, the border, uh, where those families have their ties to those late 1880s. Um, and some of those people are still buried here in the cemetery. Uh, we have a grave over on the side there that is one of our newest uh, burials uh, here in this particular section. Uh, it was 2017. This area is still owned by the Chinese Benevolent Association and Society of El Paso. Uh, this is still their area. Um, so they kind of call the rules as far as who can be buried here. 
Uh, generally, it's someone within that community. We're not entirely sure at this time how many are still interred here because not all the graves are fully marked. Some of the headstones have been buried by the literal sands of time. Uh, we have a lot of sand here and a lot of the low-lying headstones do occasionally get buried. Uh, we do have a couple uh, prayer shrines over here uh, where during certain times of the year the Chinese community will come out to clean the graves which is part of their custom. Uh, you can also uh, burn your various offerings, your prayer papers and stuff like that in these ossuary type shrines over on the side and uh, there's also another monument over there. So we have graves from 1886 all the way up to as recent as 2017 here. The paranormal stuff we have here, uh, we've had shadows. Uh, occasionally we will have trigger objects uh, react. I had uh, one tour that I was giving one night where a very disrespectful teenager was just kind of making really bad off-color jokes and got pinched on his way out so <laughs> really <laughs> yes yes uh, it's definitely a, a part of the cemetery where you want to be a little bit more respectful because apparently the ancestors will come up and get you and it's it's also a very unique cemetery this is one of the largest chinese cemeteries uh in texas we do have a lot of misconceptions uh from people who are not entirely familiar with a lot of cultures uh and they see concordia and the way it's divided up and they assume that there is a lot of racism being put into play and they see the wall of the chinese cemetery and there is a misconception that they were not allowed to be buried in town that's not entirely true the chinese benevolent society are the ones that actually built the wall themselves <laughs> and uh, just similar to how the jewish cemetery on the other side of concordia is built up by the two Jewish synagogues um, and their associations for that consecrated ground. Similar to is this Chinese cemetery also walled off for similar purposes. It's no different than Catholic cemeteries being consecrated, the Jewish cemetery also being hallowed ground, um, and other parts of the cemetery, such as our Masonic cemetery that is uh, owned by Masonic Lodge 130, having its own fenced off area. Uh, Concordia, though it's overseen by the County of El Paso and taken care of by the Concordia Heritage Association, originally it was actually owned by, or broken up into privately owned sections all in one general area from 1883 going forward to today. So this part of Concordia is what's often called Hell's Gate or Devil's Gate, uh, the other vortex. Uh, it is at the Boone Gate entrance. We've got Boone Gate and Boone Street, uh, which are over there, um, named after El Paso County Sheriff Boone. Uh, the actual hot spot is right here at the northeast corner of the Jewish Cemetery. Uh, running along the wall, we have a children's grave section. And for some reason, this is just another one of those hot spots. Uh, according to the caretakers uh, who have uh, managed the Jewish side of the cemetery, uh, a lot of weird stuff happens on that side of the wall as well. So it's another one of those, those areas where you have just another concentration of energy here in the cemetery. Uh, this part of cemetery where it got the name of Hell's Gate or Devil's Gate is where we find a lot of the more greater concentration of witchcraft, brujeria, uh, ceremonial type items. I myself have come across jars with what appears to be interesting liquids and spells uh, put in them a lot more frequently in fact a couple times a year we'll come across stuff uh, near those uh, two pine trees uh, is where we found quite a lot of them 
earlier in the year I understand that there was a small box found near one of the graves um, near the road here so uh, just a lot of interesting stuff uh, over the years uh, members of the CHA and former members have walked up during night tours uh, and ghost tours on ceremonial uh, practices going on I'm not entirely sure if they were witchcraft or some other type of activity uh, but the individual they walked up upon them and kind of spooked them off so it's it's kind of just one of those those other areas it is physically darker over here no matter what time uh, it could possibly be that we don't have the street lights as close as we do on the other parts of the cemetery uh, we do have some light from the interstate but it's still not that not that light um, at night. Uh, it is kind of cooler, but again, we have the very lush and green Jewish cemetery over there, so you're going to get a lot of that cool off that greenery over there. Uh, we do have kind of a little funnel with the winds and everything else like that from the, the surrounding environment, but other than that, it does always have a weird kind of odd feel to it. Uh, if you didn't know what was going on over here, I've had uh, friends and even guests to the cemetery uh, when I've been out here come up to me and ask what happened over here or what goes on over here uh, we've had shadow people get seen over here quite frequently we have had um, this is one of the areas where we've had shadow people near the wall uh, we've had daylight sightings of what appears to be a regular person like you and me near in this area and it's one of those they're here one minute gone the next okay so since oh, come on. <laughs> it's hard to see it in you the... can see it though yeah oh there it is again <laughs> hard to see it here in the daylight since we're here at concordia and things supposedly happen even in the daytime we're going to do a brief EVP session over here in Hell's Gate since we're not going to have access to this part of the cemetery later tonight. We've got these motion balls set up right here. Oh, two of them. Look at that one. Can I hope we can capture this? But, I mean, it's in a circle, too. Look at this. It's like everywhere around here. Here's what was on that other grave. Mm -hmm. It's broken glass and more glass right here. But yeah, this is the area in the cemetery where a lot of rituals go on, where people have been caught in the middle of rituals. This is like a vortex, like they're saying, right here. Come over here and look at this. Like, it's just weird stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the head's gone. Gosh, destruction. That is really creepy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like a headless religious figure. I'm gonna turn this EVP recorder on. Let's walk up and down here real quick. Here I'll take this. I'll take the obvious as well. It definitely feels so weird around here. You know? Okay, to anybody here in the Concordia Cemetery, if you're buried here, if you've practiced witchcraft here, maybe if you were brought here through witchcraft or a ritual, please come talk to us. My name's Colin. I'm Jeff. Just a bag of batteries. Yeah, weird. Can you tell us your name? Ron and Boy. Huh. Ron Boy Vern sentence. We're going to ask for your name. Psychic. Oh. Psychic. What, what happened to these graves? Break, 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 oh, break, oh, look! I miss it, dude. I can't see in the screen because it focused. I think so. you got to move it to focus on it. I can't see it. 
break. I just asked break. what happened to the graves. And look at look at all yes. around us. I know. Um why why does this area feel darker than the other areas? Look at K2. K2. <laughs> Major plan. Can you speak into this little box I'm holding and tell me what happens here in this part of the the cemetery? What's oh, it? Oh shit! You know what? I'm missing the K2 because. Judgment after. Walk. Right when I took a step, yeah. it said walk. Oh, interesting. Why do you choose to hang out here? Can you tell me why? Constant. He's burning strength. Burning strength record or record. Were you summoned here? Where are you in the cemetery? Abyss. Never seen an abyss. Okay. Just Is there something you want from us? House. You want a house from us? What does that mean? She said that's the portal. That little round area. I'm gonna put this in here. If you're over here in Hell's Gate, can you tell us why you choose to hang out over here? Master. Can you make some of these balls go off again? These lights, I know it's hard to do, but if you would please, make the K2 meter, this little black box, go off. Fing fingers casket explain triangle. Asking why they want to hang out here. There's also this evergreen trees. Mm -hmm. Is there something that we can do for you? Listen, hmm. listen middle. We're trying to listen, can you speak to us? It's kind of weird, it's kind of like right when we came in here. No, it's just quiet. Yeah. I felt a weird energy yeah, when we just came, right but when I don't know came. if us trying to talk. Entered him, middle entered him. Right when we talked about getting here, isn't that kind of weird? Mm -hmm. Record right when you're <laughs> right. filming it. What? Lost. Oh, there goes a block. I might get close. Lost and moan. That's a different ball. Lost moan clock. Lost and moaner. Yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. Okay, guys. Let's uh. Jeff and I are gonna go eat dinner and let's get to tonight's investigation now.
Hey everybody, it's Colin here. We are here right now in the Concordia Cemetery in El Paso, Texas, known as one of the most haunted places in the state of Texas. We've been given unprecedented access to be here to investigate claims of paranormal activity. We had to hire private security to patrol the grounds while we're in here investigating because of the people that break in, the people that do rituals and all sorts of other unsavory things within these hallowed grounds. In tonight's video, you're gonna see an extended clip from our Richard Ramirez investigation that we're shooting right here in the Three Trees area because it's important and it's a, a big part of the story here at Concordia, but this investigation is gonna include the rest of the cemetery, the places where we haven't been yet in the other video and uh, a lot more stuff, so yeah. Let me know below. Leave a comment. If you wanna win a free Paranormal Files gift bag, we send one out every week to a lucky fan. Comment below. I love Concordia. We need to see at least 500 comments during the premiere and a thousand likes. As always, everybody, thank you so much for your love, for your support, for enjoying these videos and watching us explore the world and explore hauntings and death together. If you love the channel, please like the video, leave me a comment. You can leave 10, 20 comments. It helps boost the engagement on the videos and helps more people see them. Don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna support the channel, you can buy a piece of merch or you can become a patron. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get to tonight's video. So the K2 is going off? We're just setting up right now in the Concordia Cemetery and this thing started going crazy by itself. Oh, look at the... the the paranormal music box is already going off. Really? Huh. Where is it? Look at I just set it up. Okay, cool. I set it up in between the trees here. Oh, it is going off. You want to do an EVP here, bud? Yeah, I got it. Let's do it. Shit, so it's going off already. Where's your cat buzz on? I got them spread around here. We're here right now in the infamous Concordia Cemetery here in El Paso. This is a very, very famous cemetery, not only for some of the people that were buried in here, but obviously because Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, used to come to what they believe to be this part of the cemetery to conduct animal sacrifices, satanic rituals, and he would even sleep here overnight in the cemetery. So a lot of people claim that that energy that he left here still haunts the cemetery grounds. We already had a music box go off before we started filming. We've got some cat balls, some motion balls set up around here so that if there's any motion we can see. We have a static camera over there. We're gonna do some EVPs and actually come over here. Okay. I'm gonna put this uh, REM pod over here. And then I'm gonna turn the music box back on. Let it calibrate. About four seconds. There. Okay. Oh, what the heck? Huh. Oh. Two. Oh, okay. okay. To anyone here in the vortex area, especially if you were summoned in some sort of a ritual. Please step forward out of these trees. Come towards us because we want to talk to you tonight. Can you show us that you're here somehow? Oh, God. Right when you asked. Yeah, keep coming. Do you remember a name? Richard Ramirez? Uh, oh, and the motion ball. Oh, motion. Motion. Motion ball. Oh, motion oh ball. My oh my gosh, look at this stuff. Dude, look, look at this. this. Look at this. Right when I said his name, too. Oh my god, look at this. Crazy. Huh. And the motion ball. Oh, I'm I gonna, feel, I'm gonna I still feel eerie, man. Wow, you got some stuff going on here. <laughs> Immediately, too. Wow. Look at that. This music box keeps going off. Okay, we got motion over here, guys. To give you an idea, that yeah. means someone's like, an energy is standing right here. Can you step away from the area? Wow. Can you leave for a second so we have a silence? Okay. 
pretty thick, man. Look at that. I know, I know. It, it's, it's almost it's, constant. <laughs> that thing's going nuts. Look at this thing. Are you standing right here? <laughs> hey, how about if we... Do you have your EVP in your pocket? I'm going to reset this. Okay, I'm going to turn it just a little bit too. In the bush area. Evidently he slept under these trees. Okay, now we're going to reset it. About four seconds. One, two, three, four. Look at, look at, look at. Oh, there's just a huge spike on here. Well, that's interesting, the motion ball motion went off. Motion ball over there by the trees yeah. where he's Yeah, where he, slept. where he sleeps, so. Fuck. There it goes, right, right when we said. Okay, thing. this is a totally different direction. Focus on that tombstone right there. Okay, I'm gonna start a EVP session on the voice recorder. Now let's ask some questions. Okay. Okay. Whoever's here in the vortex. Do you remember the name Richard Ramirez? Do you know the name Ricky Ramirez? Bizarre. There's a ton of energy. Is here. this the ball that went off? Or what was it over? Over there. Keep coming. Who are you? Look at When you were alive, did you When you were alive, did you ever hurt somebody? Did you ever kill somebody? Huh. Rack and over both. Music box on that. If there is energy left over from Richard Miras, did you murder someone here in El Paso? It feels like it just got cold. It's cold in here. I can, I can feel it. Talking about those trees. And Ricky would have slept under these, was the idea, right? Yeah. How about on this side? When you were alive, did you kill somebody in El Paso? Train. Can't ever get away from it. It's amazing. Trains. Do you want to hurt somebody? If you would hurt somebody, make this music box go off. It's like really still. Yeah. All of a sudden. Oh, well, it went off. Do you have a message for us? Are we welcome here? Oh, look, 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 look. Behind us. Okay. It's kind of creepy. Are you trying to sneak up behind us right now? Ominous police sirens. Well, we're here investigating a murder story. Huh? Right when I said murder. murder. Again, again, again. Murder. Murder. Are you saying you liked to kill? Are you saying you'd kill again? I'm gonna stop this voice recording. Okay. Let's do the floor camera. Okay. This is a, <laughs> right when we left, this is a very eerie cemetery. Oh, uh, what? Look at that. And that look at the both Dude, right when we left? Okay, what are the odds of that? <sighs> How is that the second time that that's happening? Okay. I was about to bring up Richard Ramirez again. Look at this. This is the exact same phenomenon that was occurring right when we started this investigation. Is there some sort of force here with us? Can you use your voice to communicate? Like I was saying, this is just really, really weird feeling out here. And it's not often that you get the paranormal music box like it's going off right now constantly and the REM pod. It's like they're corroborating each other, like there's something here. But I don't know what it is. Why don't you go from here to under that tree? It's weird that music box is, is cold. Let me see. We have a look, thermal it's going camera. off. It's going off right now. Are you recording? Oh, now it, yeah. Now it actually. Look at the heat signature on it now. I guess. 
That looks like Look at that. so trippy. Right there. So it's right look at there. This. It's 45 and it's 30. Look at that. From there, it's 43, 5. Right next to it, 34, 33. Let's go over to the music box. <laughs> I mean, this is just crazy. So this is a thermal imaging camera that will show us any phantom heat signatures. There's Jeff right there. You want to wave? Hey. <laughs> Damn, you look there freaky. You if there's some sort of entity around here, whether you were summoned here, whether you have something to do with Richard Ramirez, whether you are the spirit of somebody who's buried here, we would love to interact with you and talk to you. We come with open arms and we just want to have a conversation. So. If you can hear our voice, you can hear my voice, walk over towards the sound of my voice. And we have some toys and some machines that can help us see you. Weird how the REM pod stopped. Yeah. Oh, I got a figure. Huh. Figure. Oh, and it's, oh, oh, thing just darted. Oh, well, it's on a grave. Did you see it? Oh, okay. The oh. camera, oh, look at, look at oh. it's glitching out. Oh, right there. Oh, oh. did you hear that? The whole thing. It freaking sparked out on me. It actually just went pop. It popped. Did you hear it though? Yes. I, I was oh, filming right when that happened. It freaking and now all of a sudden that starts to... <laughs> it fried. Well, it's, that is bizarre. It's like, I think it drained it again. Look at this. Dude, what? Look at this. This was literally charging once again all day. We <laughs> used it for what? A minute? Oh, let's see. Let's just see what it's like. Well, that thing literally sparked. I know. Like, no, short. No, it's done. <laughs> okay. We literally just whipped that thing out. The screen. Wow. Okay, I'm going to continue walking and scanning the area. Who's here in the Concordia Cemetery with us? Can you walk over towards me? said that the friend pod are you over there in between the trees where are you in here I'd love to see you What do you guys think? Do you like the FLIR camera? Do you like the thermal camera? Comment below and let me know if you want us to use it more because if we get enough comments, we'll use it more. Eerie how this thing has just gone silent. Oh, what? Right when I said that. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna bring the FLIR over here. Seeing any figures here. If you people watching see anything in this footage, let me know also in the comments below. Jeff's got a brand new SLS screen, our second charged one that we brought with, so this will be very strange if this dies as well. Oh, oh look at on the ground. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, look at that. It's like, is it like at the, f it's like its, it's body. It's stretching out of a grave. Look it's, at that. It's like its body. And the, the thing is going, the REM pod's going off over there look too. Look at that. Right where it's coming from. Look at how big that is. Anybody else can show up. You can as well. Were you summoned here? Can you stand up? What do you get? Device. Oh, look, look at the REM, blaze. look at the ball. Over there. Come on, the ball. Oh. Okay, you got it? Oh, right where, right look, where the thing is. This. Oh, it's like its hand is right there. Can you do that again? Can you touch that light? That little ball? Oh God, look how long this is, Colin. <laughs> I've never seen something like that. Have you? No. <laughs> it's like it's trying to reach us. And this said device, huge blaze, scruple. Dude, that thing, that thing. Blaze like that hell thing is or sacrifices and stuff. Down here. 
Look at this. This is right here. Right here in front of us. It's yeah. right there. It's all the way to our bodies. It's reaching us. Remember, they think there are some non-human oh, look, entities look at, around look at, here. Look at, look at it. It's, it's gone off the grave, dude. Look at it. It went to the other. My God. Look at it. It's moving. Okay, there. That's that off. crazy. What is this possibly doing? Oh, look at this thing. Oh, my God. It's like crawling it's right out of the here. grave, man. <laughs> it's crawling out of the grave. Look at this thing. Oh, it, completely on the ground. Anybody else want to come out? Show yourself like this. You're welcome. We're not here Look to harm you. We're not here to harm you. Can you make the balls go off again for us, please? Gouge project. Was it your personal project to come over here and sacrifice animals? Oh, look at this thing. It's like all over the place. I have never seen the SLS behave like, behave like this. Oh, it's gone. Shadows. It's gone. Dude, it went, Shadows Portal. Dude, right, when low. It, right when it said that, it's. Oh, portal? Shadows Portals Low. Low map record. And this or is record. gone. This is gone. Oh. This is gone. But and record? Yeah. Attack. And it Attack. was. Attack. It was Act trying here. to get over Place. here at our feet. Okay. Oh. Right when we came over, it stopped. Oh, there's the music box. If you want to attack us, it's not gonna. It's not gonna work. We don't want you to do that. We just want to talk. Are you angry? Prayer bomb. Attack. Tweet copy attack. Attack again. After bomb. Mad. Really? <gasps> mad. I just asked if it was angry, oh. and it says mad. Oh. Attack. Mad. Gasp. <gasps> I literally just oh. went. <gasps> That's crazy, I just did that. Okay, this is your last chance before we move on. If this has anything to do with Richard Ramirez, can you give us a sign? Oh, I just, I just cleared it and it said result. Believe. In between the flowers. On top, sitting on top. Element hurt you see this? Look, there's another one on the ground. <laughs> on the ground. This one's on top of these flowers and the other one's next on the bare ground. It's like it's a little spirit hanging look out at, in the look flowers. At, look at it's right on the ground, flat that's, ground. This that's like, right where Richard would have been. On top of the flowers. Sleeping in, in, the, in the tree over there. Can more of you come out? Here's more the friendly. flowers that it's like hanging out on. And then that's the tree. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Oh, what, what? is going it's, it's, on? It's back to our legs again. Are you over there in the trees? Do you like to hang out in the trees? Can you say your name into this device that Colin's got? Shot. shot? Really shot. Okay. Did you murder? Oh, look at this one. Mo moved right up here and sat right on the ground right here. Okay, hold up, hold up. It's right here. Okay, stop. If you are showing up right now, can you answer a question? Did you murder a homeless man here? Did Richard Ramirez murder a homeless man? Flowers, gentle Dude, flowers, Satan. Flowers. I know, flowers right here. That's where this is sitting. Gentle, and then Satan, and Richard Ramirez was doing satanic rituals right here. Satan is crazy. Did you worship Satan in this area? Has Satan been worshiped here before? Oh, look at, now it came back again on the flower. You're back on the flower. Why do you like to sit on these flowers? Can you say your name for us? Oh, come on, look at back here on the frickin' Oh, shit, man, they're like all over the place here. Can you say your name for That's us? on the ground. Oh, motion, motion ball, motion ball. ball. Motion ball. And Randy. Randy, Randy while thin. And the motion ball right there. Randy's kind of um, our name. <laughs> Ramirez, Randy. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, the motion ball again. Yeah. I'm going to go over this way. Drown view. Remember earlier? Oh my God! Drown view. Remember the in the interview today? He said that Richard yeah, yeah, watched yep, a kid yep, drown. Yep, they died. That was his first, first first one. Brush with death. View yeah, drown. Yeah, that's, that's Richard, is is that you? Can you tell us? Did you hurt someone in El Paso? Terry, modern, wicked. If this haunting here has anything to do with Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, I'm going to give you one more chance to give us a message. Oh my god. Jeez. 
Look at that. That's the, that's the... Cremate after. It's an odd final message. Cremate after? I wonder if he was cremated. Oh, shit. Be interesting. And thrown in the ocean. Lot ocean. We've got confirmation with the SLS. Yeah. That there's there's something here. here. You know? and the ball is going off. The music box is right below us. So watch out. Okay, thank you to whoever was talking to us. We're gonna have to move on now. We want to go over to the... <laughs> let's let's just pick up a ball and that and go over to the right here. Two, two, right there. And the tree. Oh, two in the tree. Oh. oh, one fell down. Right down here. Look at that thing. You're just like jumping around. That tree. I'm trying to figure out right. It's at. Look at this dark spot. Look at that. Look at this. Where, look at this. Okay. Look at that right there. Okay, it's right above the bush. Right there. That would is be, so right, strange. There, right there would be the. Yeah, it's 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 up here in the tree. Oh, it disappeared. Right when you pointed. Okay, I'm gonna start. Okay. I'm okay. gonna start this. Figures. Well, you know, we expect figures because the cemetery. Look, another one up there. Huh. Up here now. Up there. Up in the tree. In the Look, tree. there's three figures at one time in front of this tree. Oh, get up in the actual tree in the bush. Okay. Can you tell me your name? Cynthia, are you here with us? spirit up in the tree is that where you're hiding do you like to climb trees Are there any children here with us right now? Can you just tell me who you are? Okay. You picking anything up? We'll move on since our time is ticking. Interesting how the yeah. figures have suddenly all yeah, gone have, away. Yeah, they though. have. Yeah, I, was, I had it focused on you with the tree here, and you're you're right here at the base. And hmm. let's see, this is of course much more magnified than this. There's the tree. Yeah, figures. I haven't seen one since you. There was one big one below me here, but then it disappeared. Wow. Okay. Okay. 
Pardon time. There's a lot of graves. Your SLS screen yes. froze again. No, another one. No, a different one. <laughs> a, comp a completely different there. screen. Oh, look at look at look at again, again. <laughs> are you coming out of the cage? John Wesley Harden, are you coming out to talk to us? So that was fucking crazy. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> as we came up on him, and then as we got closer, they're out. Then the one came back on again. Dude, 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 dude. Look, 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 look. The balls. All of them. All of them, dude. Dude, 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 dude. Look, 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 look. The balls. All of them. All of them, dude. Dude, 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 dude. Look, 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 the balls. All of them. All of them, dude. So, to explain where we are, we're at John Wesley Harden's grave, and behind us, that intersection over there, there was a murder in the early 2000s. When this obviously was a cemetery already, someone was murdered right here. That was like, I, I don't think I've ever seen all four all, at the same are there time. Four Have of you? Them? Yeah, there's, there's four, four of them. There? I was thinking there were three, but four. Okay. I'm gonna use this thermal floor camera and I'm gonna do a spirit box okay. right now. Okay. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Out yeah. of the blue yeah. too. We've been having like these motion balls have been going kind of nuts. Lately. Yeah. You know really. That, I mean that's that like was a, about as good as but uh, okay I'll let you go. If there's somebody I'm gonna switch. Okay, to anybody who might be here in the Concordia Cemetery, especially you, John Wesley Harden. What is that? Oh, that sounds like a Spanish. Can you tell us hi if you're here with us? I thought I heard A. Yeah. No. Hey. <laughs> no. There's over 60,000 people buried here, so you might get a lot of voices. Can you tell us your name? Oh. So I said it again. Yeah. You have to hear, listen to that back when you listen. Google it. Oh. Can you tell us your name? Oh, it's Sana. Oh. Harden. John Wesley Harden? Are you still here around your grave? I'm not sure you up. Why do you like to hang out in a cemetery? Why not just move on? Why stick around here? A lot of voices. It said, I thought it heard dead. The sheriff. You hear that? The sheriff. Did you not like the sheriff? Wow. The kid. Yeah, the kid. You, there's a lot of voices. Did you know Billy the Kid? Can you make those lights go off over here? I wish that would happen. I know, I know. Crazy. I know. Let's go over here, right here. Okay. If you were murdered here, can you tell us how you died? How were you killed? In the middle. Huh. How were you killed? Assault. Assault. Uh -huh. Three boys. Guns. A boy. 
here. <laughs> oh my god. Can you tell me your what was your name? What was that? Oh, it sounded like something. Mike? I mean, I don't know. You have to listen to all those. There's a lot. What was your name? Richard Ramirez. No. I heard that. Did you? You gotta mark Richard that, Ramirez. dude. You gotta mark that. It sounded just like. Dude, it. and right when I, right when that happened, yeah. Yeah. I moved the camera over and pointed at the three wow. trees. Right yeah. when that happened. Richard Ramirez. I think you can really isolate that. Do you know Richard Ramirez? Did you know him? Who's the darkest spirit in this cemetery? Richard. 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 Oh. oh my, it's cold out there. Yeah, I just I know, got chills, I know, I know, man. man. Why? Where does he like to hang out? No idea. All over. And then no idea and all over. Wow. That's There's a crazy. lot of voices here. That was really Richard. <laughs> Thanks, man. What was your name if you were murdered right here? Can you tell me Richard Ramirez's nickname? Oh. Make sure you pick up our balls. Do you have a message for us? Just run. Just run. Wow. That was good. Anything else left to say? Okay, everybody. It's uh, it's like 45 degrees out right oh, now. Oh no, it's way colder. My now. hands are getting numb. Yeah, it's probably like what 33. <laughs> it's like 30, yeah, 30. So since we only had access to this place at night for two hours, we're gonna have to unfortunately cut the nighttime investigation right now. But we were lucky to be able to investigate here at night, even for a bit, just to compare the difference in activity between when it's dark and when it's light. But uh, yeah, let's let's end this investigation right now and cut to the daylight in the cemetery now. Okay, everybody, so Jeff and I are finally done filming. We got here last Sunday. It is now a week later Sunday. We have filmed every single night we've been here. And even today we did two interviews and multiple other little shoots. So we're here getting some Mexican food, saying goodbye to El Paso. It is a much needed little celebration. Papa Spooks, you got the margarita. Got the margarita. What are, oh, your, what are your thoughts? Man, on this? this is the best trip ever, you know? Um, from Las Cruces to El Paso, the people, unbelievable. I mean, there's so much, right? Not one location was a disappointment, like a lot of trips are. There's usually one or not so good or two. Mm -hmm. And the stories, we've got authentic border agent, we've got an authentic FBI agent, we've got characters, and we've got a lot of just great locations with evidence that are going to be historic. So, but I'm shot. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm going to dip my chip yeah. real quick. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. I would say this has been one of the best trips, if not the best trip, we've ever done. Such great people, from Johnny to Ramiro and Alex Leon. and Leon and everybody that we've hung Emily. out with. Emily. Everyone was so great. Shout out to all of you guys who were in the videos. Shout out to all of you guys who are watching the videos. Paul. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Chris Listen. and Van. Murderous Colette. <laughs> and Killer Colette. <laughs> Little inside jokes. Seriously, y'all who are watching are the ones who make this possible and make this happen. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is all because of you. And I mean, we really did everything from 
haunted restaurants to a jail, a haunted hotel, a honky tonk really bar, yeah, a serial killer episode, border patrol agent, best friend Richard Ramirez, crazy. Yeah, it's just it's been it's crazy. The next series, though, is going to be rocking. I can promise you that because it can only go up from here. Now that we're here, it's like we have to find a way to trump this. Or top this. <laughs> Don't want to get political here. <laughs> it's fantastic. We're in this Mexican hotel. There's like, what, 150 Mexican restaurants in El Paso? This is the third one? Fourth one? I don't know. Fourth. Fourth one, but come to El Paso. Shout out to El Paso. Really nice people here. Yeah, like everyone was saying to us too, this whole trip, El Paso doesn't really get the respect that it, yeah. they feel it deserves in TV shows and, and ghost hunting and everything. In but Texas, yeah. And, yeah, in Texas. But we had seriously some incredible activity and met incredible people here. So if y'all want to come check out the paranormal and, and yeah. see yeah. real it's history, the there's so much history here. There's like a hundred more places we could have done, but we've already been filming for a whole week. So yeah. <laughs> we're very burnt out. But come to El Paso, great city, great people. Hi everybody. I guess that's the end of the series. And uh, I don't think we've even said the catchphrase once this whole trip. I don't think so. Good heaven. Wow, what the hell? We love you guys. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. And uh, look what I'm in this downcast lighting. I know, this lighting is shitty. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Yeah, I want to add in too. We were going to do a, when we were at the Adobe Deli, we were going to have a skit where Jeff and I were wearing tinfoil hats and Jeff gets abducted by a UFO because of the UFO sightings out there, but we didn't have time to film it. No, it would have been fun. It would have been, trust me, it would have been really fun. Yeah, cool. But anyways, three, two, one. Stay, stay spooky. spooky. Oh, no, we got another one. We got to do another one. Stay, stay spooky. spooky. Yo, cheers. cheers.